everyone. This is Ida of Created to Create. Welcome back to my channel. I have a uh, project share. Uh, I've been working on some Valentine or trying to work on some Valentine uh, embellishments, but I was having a little difficulty to be quite honest because I feel like my way of crafting has changed. And because of that, you know, there's a lot of times I'll see something or I'll have some things to work with, but I just can't seem to create with them because I don't feel inspired to create with them because of uh, the way my crafting, my taste for crafting has changed. Uh, I feel like anymore, I'd like things that look more realistic. I love flowers. So anyway, I created some things and I will share those with you later. But for now, I want to share with you uh, the later stuff that I created that I was more pleased with. So I want to share it with y'all. Um, I created some back toppers and I just started yesterday. I started yesterday. I put aside everything that I was working on because like I said, I wasn't happy with it. And then I just, um, just started printing out some of my carnation craft, uh, artwork that I really, really love. I wanted to create something that was a shabby chic romantic style, uh, Valentine embellishments and back toppers and stuff like that. And I, and I had a, a die that I felt fit the bill for that. Look at this beautiful back topper, you guys. Is that gorgeous or what? Very, very simple. Uh, the back, uh, it's, it's in pink. So I used a couple of shades of pink because there's, uh, like different shades of pink in the artwork. And, uh, so I, the bag topper that I have, I'm going to share it with you. Um, hold on one second. Let me grab it. The bag topper that I have, uh, I bought on Amazon and I will link it in the description box. Um, there's a couple of people that sell it on, um, I think it's on Prime even. Uh, it's this one right here and it comes with, uh, the layering piece so you can either, uh, Use it like this, and you you uh, have to cut out two, and then I cut out two, and I glued just the strip on the top and the handle together, and then left the the half the bottom half or three or um, three quarters unglued. I only glued a strip on the top and then the handle, so I was able. What I love about this die is that I am able to use two different colors versus a die that is uh, cuts out in one piece, then I wouldn't be able to, I would have to cut two uh, whole things. And, you know, sometimes that's a waste. So sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. In this case, I like this because I have to cut two to create the back topper, one for the front and one for the back. So I'm able to cut one in pink and one in the gold. Now, if I wanted to create this into a shaker, this makes shaker uh, bag toppers. All I would do would be to leave the piece in here. After I cut the solid ones out, I just need to add the piece here and run it through my machine again. And then I'll have that perfect window or aperture to turn it into a shaker. But in this case, I didn't want to do a shaker. I just wanted to, I can, you can use it as a shaker or you can use it as cutting this by itself and as a layering piece the way I did. I used it as a layering piece. And this does come with the big one and the small one. So I made both sizes. And I like this back topper so much, guys, that I ordered a second one because when you get them in, this center piece is actually connected to the outer portion. And, um, and I wanted a second piece. So if I decide I want to make a shaker, it's already lined up perfectly because it's connected. So those I'm not going to snip apart. So I ordered two sets and I think they were only like $7 and change, uh, for a set of two. So I really like this bag topper. So let me set it aside. So I was able to cut one out in pink and then I used this, um, this is a 3D embossing folder by Sizzix, I believe. I have it handy right here. Let me grab it. I have a bunch of stuff out that I've been working with. Yep, yeah, it's a Sizzix. And I bought this a couple years ago, and I really didn't use it. 
And uh, but I love embossing the back of tags, the back of cards, the back of bag bag toppers. I think that it gives it a finished look. So this is the 3D embossing folder. If I can find it on Amazon, I will link it in the description box. But it's very uh, dimensional, the, the hearts. And there's really not an orientation because the hearts are just going in every direction. So I like that about this. Like I didn't have to put in my piece a certain way. Uh, because if I had to have laid it like this, it would hang out off the sides on the... Um, on the embossing folder because it's just a regular small you know there's standard size the smaller ones so I was able to emboss the back and then I cut one out in gold and I also cut this little cherub that I shared the other day I cut him out in gold and then the layering piece I cut it out in a paler shade of pink and this is the the pink stack that you get at Michael's that has the three different shades or four different shades of pinks. Uh, so it's 110 pounds. It's a very heavyweight cardstock. And again, I embossed that with the heart uh, embossing folder. And then this piece right here is a carnation craft die. It is called Blythe. And I will link it in the description box. And you do get some of the artwork for free and some you have to purchase. Um, I believe this is the free one. I'm not sure. No, I think I, I, I think I, um, I might have bought it all. I'm not sure. No, I think this is the free one, guys. And, um, and there's other dies. There's one that has, uh, daisies in the, that collection. And there's one that has, um, carnations. So this is the rose one. And, uh, it's, it's a card frame die. And I think the collection is called Summer Days. As in, uh, not in day, D-A-Y, but D-A-Z-E. So anyway, it, it prints out. I'll share it with you how it prints out. This is a rose one. It prints out like this, guys, like three different banners. If you only want one-sided, if you want to do double-sided, then it has a black line down the middle. And I've already shared that with you guys uh, several times on how to uh, score it down on that black line and glue this up, the glue it together and then run it through your machine. But uh, that's the way it comes out. And uh, so it does cut this little banner piece and it does have a shadow piece to it. If I wanted to cut the shadow out in gold or silver, I could have, but in this case, I didn't want to. And then it has all the layering die pieces to cut out the layering the flowers i don't think i have any of those printed out i did have them but i use well there's one i haven't cut out yet this is the carnation so all i have to do is lay my die here run it through the machine and it cuts all the different pieces and i know it looks a little fuzzy on the edges that's called a bleed line because if you put your die on here and you're a little off it gives you a little wiggle room so that's what they look like and I had, I, I printed the double-sided ones. So you get less when you print double-sided. But uh, I love the way it came out. And I didn't add any tape. I need to add the, the tape. But I think what I'm going to do with this Happy Mail is I'm going to include like double-sided tape and maybe glue, you know, some practical things. So there are the big ones. These two are the roses. They're all exact. Oh, this I used a different embossing folder on this one uh, this embossing folder is by carnation crafts and I'm not sure if that's available but I will share it but I will tell you what I really wanted something that had just leaves and I didn't have anything like that so there's that one and here's the carnation one see how beautiful they look the carnations and they're all layered up I got my little cherub here in the corner Again, it does come with the, you know, you just cut it out, the banner, and it cuts out the leaves. Uh, if I wanted to snip this piece off, I could, the banner part, but I didn't want to. I like the way it looks. So there are the uh, large ones. I'm going to set them to a side, and then I cut out the baby ones. Now, the center strip, the banner, that floral banner that comes in that artwork is too big for the little one, but I did have in flowers left. 
like layering pieces that I was able to use without putting the whole banner there. Again, because the cherub is so small, it still is a, is in you know a good size or proportion for the bag topper. And I did put him up on foam, and these are all layer, layered up as well. I did emboss the back again. I did him exactly the same. The darker pink on the back, the lighter pink on the front, both of them embossed. The gold piece in the front, then the little cherub and the layered roses. And then here is a lighter rose. And then here is the carnation one. There's the carnation one. Look at how pretty they look. So I think these are absolutely beautiful. Let me set these to this side. And then I created some bows. I just finished creating some bows to match. And I was, and I, again, I'm inspired by the beautiful uh, floral banner. So here are the bows that I created for to go with this set. I used, I had a paper in a heavyweight cardstock that matches perfectly with the color that's going on, the darker flower that's going on on the the floral banner so I did the back piece in, in the gold foil then the darker color then the very pale pink and this bow die has little hearts that cut out uh, so I thought it was perfect and then I added a little teeny tiny rose there and I saved all the little hearts that came out of that I actually have them in this jar you can't see them because I'm going to make a sequence mix uh, that matches and uh, these little hearts were so tiny and beautiful they look like confetti or like sequin uh, so I put it in the jar so I can use it as part of the sequin mix but I created these four let me move these aside and then there's one more thing that uh, I created this came like because I like the artwork so much the ideas were just flowing versus when I try to make myself create with something that is not really my style of crafting anymore. And I see other people doing it. I think it's beautiful and they just have a knack for it. I don't have a knack for that. So there's the, the back toppers. And I'm going to move these aside uh, because I want to share with you what else I created. And these are taking up too much room. The other thing that I created is I made some uh, like bags. And not like a, more well, I guess you could call it a gift bag, but it's more like a little sack than a gift bag. It doesn't have gussets or anything. I created these bags again with the artwork. Uh, this one, what these were created with the double-sided uh, printed image. And I cut down the center where the black line was. I kind of cut that black line off. And that gave me two different halves of the long, uh, you know, because the banner's like this, the long way. It's not on the, the, and you have to print it out in A4 paper. So it's not an eight and a half by 11. It's bigger. So if you do not print it out on an A4 paper, uh, you might not get the right proportion. You probably won't get the right proportion to cut it with your dies. So always print on an A4 paper, a uh, hundred percent or actual size, and uh, they do have a specialty paper that's called Pro Printing Paper that you print on. But before I was able to, before I even used it, I was looking for a way to improvise where I could print and not have to wait for my paper to come in from the UK. I'm going to share that paper with you. Uh, I was able to find it in an A4, and I actually have two of them that I use, but they're pretty much the same thing. Um, it's this paper right here, and it is for uh, photos or uh, like brochures. It is an A4 size. Right here it says A4, and uh, I will link both of the papers that I use, and this is a double-sided matte paper. And the other one, I think it's only a, a single side matte paper. Now, when I print on that, on that paper, let me share the other one with you. 
Yep, this one is double-sided as well. So this is also an A4 double-sided matte coated paper, 180 GSM. So it's not very thick, but when you print, use this paper to print and you're doing the double-sided, that's actually a good thing because when you fold it in half, you have the double thickness and it would be harder for your die to go through uh, two paper. So it's still pretty uh, firm, you know, for it, it works perfectly for printing out your artwork. Also, when you print with the, the artwork, for the best results, you want to print it on that type of paper or Carnation Crafts Pro Paper is the best. Um, but if you can't find it or it's out of stock or you need it now, you know, this is the other way to go. You have to print it 100% or actual size. You have to set your settings on your printer, on your computer for your printer to... Um, photo paper and then you have to choose matte paper and then you want to set it to the the quality you want to set it on high not on standard and you have to make sure that you choose the correct size paper it does give you an a4 option to choose that paper so that's how you want to print that on an a4 paper photo paper set the photo to matte and high quality so anyway, the way I created these, I had um, some pink printing paper. I had bought some pastel colors, and it has pink and like a mint green and maybe a pale blue. And I remembered that I had pink. So this is made with just the photo paper up here and then the print paper up here. Regular letter, standard size printing paper. And uh, what I did was I, I cut out this portion. I was able to get two out of the one sheet because I printed double-sided. I cut off the that black piece. And then I cut myself a strip. Let me get something. I got my I cut myself a strip from a um, just a white letter size computer paper. I cut out a strip, or you can use the, the, I used the scraps, actually, to this. I had uh, the flowers that I had cut out, had a, a strip on the edge, and that's what I used. That's what this is. So it's actually glued together, and you can see a little bit right there, the black line. So I cut myself out a strip, and I, um, I, I got my printed piece, and I added glue to half of my strip, and I glued my paper on top, making sure to line up at the ends. And then I cut my pink paper, uh, and I trimmed both of them to be the size of my regular standard, our regular standard size paper. So then I got my pink paper, and I added glue to the bottom part of the strip, and I just butted it up against the white paper. And now uh, both papers are flush, because I have a strip underneath that helps them uh, stay lined up. And um, so I did a full 8.5 by 11. I trimmed off the sides on my artwork paper to line up perfectly with our standard. Well, it would be this piece. I made. I trimmed it to line up perfectly with this strip. And, uh, and then I just scored the way, you know, you guys make bags, you, I'm just letting you know how I reinforced it and how I, how it was easy for me to line up. And then with my gold paper right here, I cut out a very narrow strip. It might not even be a quarter of an inch to camouflage where my paper was lined up, even though it wasn't noticeable because it butts up perfectly. It really wasn't noticeable, but I did want to include the uh, gold in there so everything would have that gold foil paper. And I just cut that little strip and I added glue here and I glued it from end to end on the 11 inch piece of paper. So your paper has to be the whole 11 inch to make your bag. Then you can trim it down according to how big or how small you want to make. Uh, your bag man maybe I'll do a tutorial on that because sometimes I can explain it and some people and some people will get it and then some of us are need to be uh, a visual learner so sometimes I'm that way so maybe I'll do a tutorial on that 
And this is what they end up looking like. Look at how beautiful that looks. I love the way it looks. And all I did was overlap right here. And I did trim it where uh, you wouldn't see any white. Or I tried on some of them. It didn't work out. But on this one it did. Uh, you don't see any white. I cut it off at the end. Or close to the end of the banner. Actually the end of the banner on one side. That way when I overlapped it. The banner would match. Would line up. And you wouldn't see a white little uh, you know, strip of paper right there. So that's how I did that. And um, again, I scored it. I cut off the two end tabs. And I'm not going to explain it because I, I'll probably confuse you. And just left the center piece and that I scored half an inch and folded it up. And that gives me that little closure down here. But this is what the bags look like. And I kind of messed up. This was the first one I made, and it's not perfect because, you know, the first one is where we make all our mistakes, but it doesn't look bad. But I wanted the banner to be towards the bottom, so if someone put a back topper on here, it wouldn't cover the flowers. But after I started doing, like, an assembly line, I didn't pay attention uh the orientation or where my banner was. So the, the ones that I did um, assembly style... The banners are at the top. So that's the only thing. But I was able to add a little decorative piece here uh, if I wanted to. Or I could have actually added it to the bottom. You know, you can do all kinds of things. I only did one because I had this die cut up here. And I like the way it looks. But a doily would split in half would look really great. But these are the bags that I created. And they do measure uh, five and a quarter uh, by about six and three quarters maybe a little under so they are a pretty good size bag and you can get quite a bit in there so there's the inside of the bag and uh, but that is all that I created so far with this uh, paper I'm probably gonna make some tags and some other things and uh, I'm not sure but maybe a word would look good here but I'm not gonna really embellish it completely because I want the recipient to be able to add their their own touch. Let's say, for example, the recipient will want to add a white doily to the bottom of the bag. Look at how pretty that looks. Maybe not on that one because that has the gold. But let's say somebody wanted to add the, a, a piece like this to the bottom of the bag. Look at how beautiful that looks. And I want to give them that option that a, they can add, you know, they can add whatever they want. To complete the bags. Um, also, I'm, I'm going to try and figure out a way to uh, come up with whether it be a clothespin or a clip or something to keep the bag closed or maybe just some pink and this raspberry color uh, tissue paper would look pretty. I don't know. I'll see what I can find uh, or what I come up with, but I love the way these bags created and I did create um, Two of the carnation flower and then two of the rose ones. And that's that's all I have so far, you guys. I have a bunch of little bits and pieces up here where I'm working. Um, just I just scoot them to the back. And that's where this piece was because I never put it away. Anyway, that's all that I've created so far, guys. I, as soon as I come up with more, I will share them with you. I do want to make some rosettes as well in this color if I, if I have the crepe paper. I know I have pink, and I would love to make some in this green color. I think would look really pretty with this collection, but I don't think I have that color. So anyway, th hopefully that gives you ideas. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone is having a uh, great day, and I hope that um, this inspires you to uh, create something for somebody and um, and that this gives you ideas that this makes it easier for you. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone is having a great day and God bless. Bye.